My interest in evolutionary biology started in high school. We read The Origin of Species in class and I read parts of what Mendel had written about heredity. And it was so fascinating to figure out how the world had come to be, how evolution had led to the diversity of life around us. And then I went to university and thought I would study genetic engineering so that I could mix math and genetics. Turns out genetic engineers don't use much math, but uh, evolutionary biologists do. The models are actually quite similar in evolutionary biology as in economics. We're trying to predict what will happen given the various forces at work. So why is it that so many species reproduce sexually? When they produce an offspring, they dilute the genes with those genes of the mate. So this is like having the amount of genetic fitness in the next generation. So my mathematical models have been trying to tell us what could possibly counteract this huge cost to reproducing sexually. Well, the problem is if you're asexual, you get 100% of the, your genes into that offspring. But you can't mix and match. If a beneficial change happens in this individual and a beneficial change happens in this individual, they can't come together. So I've been trying to quantify how important is it to mix and match? And can that explain why sexual reproduction is so common in the world? One of the recent studies that we've done took a look at a family called the evening primroses. And it turns out that a lot of the evening primroses are asexual, whereas other ones are sexual. And so we constructed the evolutionary tree, the evolutionary family amongst all all of these species of primroses to find out what happens in the long term. And we found that the asexuals were just fine at evolving new species. That wasn't the problem that they had, but they didn't persist. Either they went extinct, or even more commonly, after a while, they went back to sex. So what we suspect is happening is over time, the inability to combine genes in different individuals gives any mutation that restores sexual reproduction to that population a huge advantage.